You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum, and the Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello, kids, and welcome to season three and episode number 135 of the morning show, The Crier Media. Today, recording day is, oh, let's see what it is, Tuesday, June 6th, 2023. And, uh,. Well, I'm not quite sure what kind of day it's going to be at the Beaver Lodge because um, there's smoke. And uh, Mr. Grizzly, if you would show the weather, please. Yes, this is the weather. Look what it's supposed to load. There it is. Yep. That's what it looks like outside my window. The sky is uh, green, kind of looking like pea soup. Uh, very smoky out. It was similar to that yesterday, but it wasn't nearly as bad today. It's worse and it doesn't look like it's going to improve anytime soon. So, yeah, that's a live shot of Battle Royale. Um, if you have that's a lot of work. asthma, allergies, OP, mesothelioma, or lung cancer. Don't go out. Stayed all day yesterday. I did not stay. The Bridget came over for last night because it's pretty. Then I spoke to a few friends who said it, it looks terrible out. It's surreal and it smells really bad. So I'm yeah. about to uh, hit that up in a few minutes when I head into the office because I I have to head into the office for meetings today. But I'm going to put a KN95 on for the walk. Uh, might help a little bit, you know. Yeah, well, I, I was looking at my email today. Pardon? I was going to say anything can help a little bit today, right? It, it's it's just it's just not good out there. So, and any any way I can improve uh, upon it, you know. Yeah. No, I um, I um, I was looking at my emails uh, today, and uh, um, there were reports from my tennis club about people having played and scores coming in. And I'm thinking, I really want to play tennis, but I don't think this is the weather to be running around and start huffing and really inhaling. No, it's not. It's not in New Delhi. And actually, when I, w- when I was in New Delhi, the air was much better than this right now. 
the entire time I was there. Now, as soon as I left, it it was the worst report they'd ever had in history, but I, I was there at the right time. I shouldn't laugh at that because that's not funny. I just, it's ironic that I got there. The air was great. It was there perfect the whole time I was there. And when I left two days later, it was the worst they ever had. But right now, um, it's not good in Ottawa. The AIQ currently, I'll have to check that out. Give me a second here, see if I can find it. AIQ, air index quality, air quality index. Mm -hmm. The QI level of Ottawa. Well, let's see right now. Ah, there we are. Just pulling up, waiting for the page to open, and I'll give you the, it's uh, US AQI is 250, very unhealthy. Um, very unhealthy is, is one of the ratings I get. Um, yeah, that's uh, not good. Not good at all. Um, let's see, there's around the world and Ottawa is really bad right now. There's, I'm looking at the AQI from India and it will compare it because they, they, they get to ratings and they're saying, uh, oh my goodness. AQI is 208, and so that is the current PM 2.5 concentration in Ottawa is 13.3 times above the recommended limit limit given by the World Health Organization 24-hour air guideline quality. So, yeah, it's, it's really bad right now. Actually, this is the worst it's ever been, according to this. We Jeez. are in the unhealthy stage right now. Um. Yeah, we're in the between 201 and 300 is a rating, and that's the unhealthy stage, and we are at 208. Oh, sorry, no, I'm, my apologies. That was last night. We're at 250 right now. So we're pushing into the severe. 301 and above is is severe. 401 and above is hazardous. But we're we're in unhealthy right now. So yeah, um, yeah, it's not good. It's not good at all. I mean, yeah, look at that. And, you know, it's ominous. It looks, you know what it looks like? If you've seen like, the still films, right? You know, yep. eight days later. I'm thinking like you wait after or something. That's what it looks like, yeah. Day after yeah. tomorrow or something it was or something? The day after. Oh, God. Yeah, it's, 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 not it's, it's bad out there. Yeah, there are currently 420 wildfires burning in Canada, and 250 are out of control. Most of them in Quebec. Um, other provinces no longer have any firefighters to spare. So uh, the province of Quebec is bringing in people from the USA and France. Um, in British Columbia, in the northeast, the Donny Creek fire is over 2,400 square kilometers, making it one of the largest in the province's history. And we also have one of the largest fires in the province's history in Nova Scotia going on in the south. Near Barrington, I'm. Yeah, it's bad. I don't know what to think. Uh, Quebec's firefighting agency says it's prioritizing its response to the limited resources. So there's a lot of places that are just on their own. They're battling yep. about three dozen wildfires with the help of the Canadian Armed Forces, but they're about triple that amount currently burning. <sighs> the whole nation's on fire. It's not going to get any better soon. Yeah, yeah. It's and it's not about to improve. It's going to get worse, and there's just not and, enough people to fight them right now. Right? Yeah, and uh, while this is happening, uh, we've got people still doing uh, the stochastic terrorism thing. And there's one account on Twitter that's uh, particularly bad uh, for this, and it's a. Uh, this guy over here, Mr. Grizzly, I will uh, put something up. But uh, if any of you are on Twitter, uh, this is probably an account uh, to report massively. Oh, I Go guess I have up. to uh, blow it up even more. Um, Stu Peters, at Real Stu Peters. It seems that he has a podcast as well. But here, yeah. watch all of southeastern Quebec catch fire on fire at the exact same time. Statistically impossible to happen by accident. Clearly, our governments are targeting us with directed energy weapons. DEW. Yesterday, yesterday, he had something on where um, he was basically saying that, uh, well, gays deserve the death penalty. 
Yeah, he's a he's a real piece of work. That son of a bitch. So I'm just like sitting Sorry there. To his like, mother. How do you post something about uh, gays deserving the death penalty, and your tweet stays up for? Yeah. Uh, well, when I was there, it was up for five hours. Already. You report it. It's still up. All you can do. You report it. Everybody report it. Um, because it needs to be reported. Um, well, it's messed up. Let me just grab my coffee. I left it in the kitchen. I'll be right back. My apologies. Yeah. No, dude truly is messed up. I mean, that's just great. Well, I'm sorry. I'm trying not to use the word crazy in that way, but oh my God, this guy, it's... You know, I know that these people are doing this for attention. You know, it still does something to you. You know, when you uh, how just heard you, you're just scrolling on Twitter one day, and then all of a sudden you see like, oh my god, yeah. this this, this person is like literally calling for us to die. Yep. I, oh man, some people, some people, it's just, yeah, I, I, Rough, yeah, right? anyway, yeah, yeah, I'm your host, the eager beaver pronouns, he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver, eh? and with me as usual is my dear friend, Mr. Grizzly. Of course, a big thank you goes to our podcast founding sponsors, the Peppermaster, the Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing and CanadianTarot.com. Uh, we have a Tuesday morning nibble for you, um, but uh, Mr. Grizzly, how's your mental health today? Uh, you know, it's 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 not actually. I'm, I didn't. I had a. I didn't sleep the best last night. I, it was uh, one of those uh, nights with um, the vivid dreams, and I was in a verbal altercation with somebody and there was a pushing match and I kind of woke up, uh, you know, the adrenaline was pumping. I woke up in a sweat and yeah, I didn't, I didn't sleep well, but I, I'm, I'm in great spirits. Um, you know, I talked about it last night on the ASMR show about how I had a bit of anxiety on the weekend, but, uh, right now at this moment in time, I, I feel great. Now I'm not looking forward to the walk to work. Um, and I'm going to smell like a campfire, but we all will. So, you know, whatever, but, uh, um, the walk to work, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about my, um, my lungs and my eyes. Uh, I will wear a KN95 on the walk in so that it might help a little bit, but my eyes are going to be itchy, watery, and I'm, it's probably going to be a miserable day in the office, to be honest with you. Jeez. But I'm in good spirits. Okay. Uh, oh, and, uh, I don't know if you had noticed, um, uh, Vegas has is up two games. They won Saturday night's game five two, and they were that was a tie game well into the third period, and they they scored three unanswered goals. So they're up five two in game one, and then last night they destroyed Miami seven to two. So I was expecting well Miami Florida well they're in Miami, but I was expecting Florida to do better. Uh, but then again, you know what? They were down three games to none against Boston, the best record recorded season in history came back and won it so right 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 it's not over right. I, I basically i want a seven game series and i want to see good hockey a seven two drubbing is not what i want to see in the stanley cup final yes exactly uh, I, I i hear you uh, either way whoever yeah. wins it is the first time that team has ever won the stanley cup right right which is right. great i think that's awesome i like the idea oh, of a yeah. new champion <laughs> it's a it's a weird day it's a weird yes day. alan you are correct there is a fire in in calabogie right now and that's what's contributing yes. to ottawa's smoke it's um it, it's been burning for a couple of days now i think and it i guess yeah there was another one last night so it just it's just getting worse as the moments tick by the seconds yeah. tick on so yeah. uh in uh international news um the news that absolutely nobody was waiting for um mike mm. pence has declared that he's running for president oh well, yeah. 
Yeah, that makes him the seventh person to enter. So uh, it looks like we might be going for another. Uh, the GOP is like setting himself up to do the exact same thing that happened last time. Have like 16 people on stage and, you know, have the polls divide 16 ways. And then Donald Trump will get like 27 percent and the other person behind him will have 12. And this, oh, my God, what a massive lead. You know, like just, yeah, it's like 73 percent of the people don't want him. But given that the race is being split 16 ways and he's leading the next guy by 12 percent, even though he's under 30, well, he's the front runner, the inevitable. They're literally setting themselves up to do a re. Why do these people love reruns? Well, it is summer. <laughs> Coming. <laughs> it's just so. Yeah, we have a uh, Donald Trump, Nikki Haley. Why? Vivek Ramaswamy, who's a businessman. Like we need another CEO. Asa Hutchinson, the former Arkansas governor who somewhat speaks against Trump every now and then. Tim Scott, the South Carolina senator, um, or AKA Token. Uh, and Ron Death Sentence. And now Mike Dispense. Yeah, and, and well, here's, you know, Ellen put a his stellar question. lineup. Didn't they want to harm, harm Pence? Yeah. They did. They, they on January sixth they called for they wanted to make yeah, they wanted to make sure he was well hung. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. So I don't understand Mike Pence at all. No. Like no. he literally thinks no. that there is a path for him if he still sucks up to the Trump people who like I'm not gonna diss Trump too much because I still want your votes. They tried to kill you. Yeah, well, it, and it's bizarre because people who wanted to kill him. So you know, he's a pretty horrible human being, right? right? Yes, but he does believe in democracy. Sure. Because, he, well, I mean, he he was there for the counting to make sure, and and yeah. he he they said, well, he's a traitor because he's there for the for the official counting on January sixth, and I'm like, no, he he understands how it works, and that. You know, uh, Joe Biden's team won, so he's there to authenticate it. Yeah. And again, like I said, I don't like the man. I think he's a pretty terrible person, but he does understand the democratic system, and he does understand. Um, but I'm that, not even sure it's that. I'm not even well, sure it's that. Remember, he's got mother. Yeah, that's right. He's got mother behind. Yeah. And right now, all those people that, uh, all these lawyers that worked for Trump, all these special electors that, you know, signed these papers because there's a couple of states right where they sent in the papers and they said this is this is the let this is our list of replacement electors in case the decision gets overturned so then you don't have to go send us to get the electors you could just like use these people right away and speed this up yeah but there are many of them that presented these documents and made them look like actual documents and said no no we are the actual electors and we are signing and we are which is outright fraud, like forged documents, mail mm -hmm. fraud. <laughs> oh yeah, like all these these are the people that, you know, in Georgia, some of them were offered the plea deal that the lawyer just didn't tell them about <laughs> the immunity deal. So, um, this guy is the guy that had the front row seat for four years. Mm -hmm. Right. This guy was so oily, the word oleaginous that <laughs> came out. He's like oil just all over. And, mm, like, I wouldn't, all the times, without the wonderful leadership of our, of our president, Donald Trump. <laughs> it's like, and like doing it with his like race Bannon look. Mm. Very, very mm. serious. You know, because, and he was there to try to make him, what, I mean, he, I think he spent the whole four years going, whoa, whoa. What the president was really saying is, yeah. <laughs> right? Sort and of, yes. It, and making it sound, oh, so reasonable, right? It's just, yeah. This, <laughs> Here, I, I've got a, I've got a, uh, 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 I don't, I, I, I just do not understand this man. Uh, now, uh, and so he sees what's going on. Like, how would I put it? His whole thing is being evil while making it sound also reasonable, a bit like Danielle Smith. 
Yes, yeah. That way, like that, she makes it sound friendly. He makes it oh. sound just just reasonable. But it's like he's seeing all these people go down. Well, Daniel Smith lost. It's Christine like Anderson I'm not allowed yesterday. to legally do this. I'm not going. I'm not going down for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not. Well, that's it. He's not. <laughs> he's an not idiot. particularly noble. He wasn't no. particularly democratic. He's, he's just not stupid. Every single lawyer having to do something with Trump is now has to take legal fees. Every single person he hired basically had to hire a lawyer the moment they were hired. All their salary went to lawyer legal. I don't know why yeah. any of these people took these jobs because as soon as you got hired by Trump, you had to lawyer up. <laughs> it's just well. So uh, um, I, I, I sorry, I got I got sounds going off here all over the place on my computer. Um, so I'm going to jump in the bathroom in a minute with the mobile phone to give the uh, shave of the day for Ooh. our fundraiser. But I do have a quick video clip. Uh, I don't know if you happen to see this or not. This was on Power and Politics yesterday. And uh, it's interesting because it's Lisa Raitt trying to distract from David Johnston and how Pierre Polyev uh, gushed about him from 2009. And... Mm. But she still thinks Justin Trudeau's skiing with him when he was 12 years old is relevant. So let, let, let's have a look at this, shall we? This is this is most it's interesting. Being dumb for pay. <laughs> of uh, the 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 archives of Mr. Polyev praising Mr. Johnson, <laughs> and what do you think is going to happen tomorrow? So I'm going to start with tomorrow. I think the toughest question that David Johnston's going to face is why won't you adhere to the will of Parliament and resign? Mm. I think that's the toughest question. Regardless of anything else, he can explain all that stuff away. This one is about him not adhering to Parliament. And he has to say that it's because Trudeau's his boss. And that is a real tough argument to make and i don't think it's going to go well so of all the things i'd be worried about it's that and let me very clear distinction between this that's going on right now with the rapporteur and what david johnston did before in the case with mulroney and carl hans schreiber Johnston was brought in after Harper made the call on having a public inquiry. And that is fundamentally important because you said at the top that he's looking into the Mulroney Kreiber affair and that he was deciding on a public inquiry. He was not. Right. Terms of that reference. It made. was the terms it was of a reference. Political, it's a very big distinction. It was a political decision to call for an inquiry. And at the end of the day, that's all that's going on here. We want a political decision on calling for a public inquiry. That's what the conservatives want to have. The terms of reference, yes, were drafted by David Johnston, and yes, there's questions about whether or not he was there. But, you know, there's lots of articles out there, if you go back in time, that talk about the fact there was absolutely zero connection between Stephen Harper and David Johnston and Stephen Harper and Brian Mulroney on a personal basis. And that is completely not the case in the case of David Johnston and Justin Trudeau. So all that to be said, the still the toughest question tomorrow is going to be, why are you not adhering to a vote of parliament? You are right. a man of substance. You understand institutions. Why won't you abide by parliament's rule? Well, Rob. There is so much bullshit there. Yeah. There is so much bullshit. Okay, so there. what this is pertaining to is that uh, former governor general, the independent special rapporteur, David Johnson, is going to be testifying this morning in front of the House Procedural Affairs Committee. Mm -hmm. Now, remember, they were going to make a big scene for the cameras on which they could fundraise, trying to get him to come because they expect him to resist. And uh, before they could even start, uh, he had already let them know that he was going to come. So, womp, 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 womp. so again, these people think that they are going to somehow they that they've cleverly found a way to funnel this 81 year old man yeah so when they're turning around and saying no oh i can't believe this 81 year old man got led by the nose with trudeau and like make himself like you know like he's not like mentally able to defend himself or something mm -hmm. yes um well i mean we could be if we were conservatives and this was these were liberals doing this. Was I can't believe that they are forcing this eighty-one-year-old man to come and testify for like three hours in front of a committee? I mean, why would they torture? He's a senior citizen. Hasn't he given enough to the country? I mean, he's so frail. I mean, that's that's what you guys said, conservatives. I mean, this this man who obviously can't 
uh, stand for himself who can't say no, who must do what the prime minister says he feels he can't resist, or and the prime minister put him in this such a terrible situation that apparently he had no ability to say no to. <laughs> I guess, right? I guess the 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 prime minister like you know put him in a suplex and you know made him say uncle. <laughs> I I don't know how the prime minister got him to do this, right? But this guy that was like, oh, so defenseless against the big, bad, mean prime minister who forced him to do this now is being dragged in front. Do we not see the irony? Number one. Number two, um, that is not going to be the toughest question he's going to face. If why won't you follow the will of parliament, it's going to be the toughest question you've got. No, the toughest questions you're going to be facing is about stuff that's actually in the report, because in the report he made some really, really, really good recommendations about how information circulates and how information is transmitted and how information does or does not move from the intelligence service up the ranks of government. Those, I would hope, would be the tougher questions. That question is pretty easy to answer. His mandate doesn't come from Parliament. And so far, nobody from Parliament has publicly suggested the name of another human being who could do the job. No. Right? No, of course and, not. No, no, no. And, 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 right? The work needs to be done in a timely manner because if we stop the work now, to like try and find a rapporteur that everybody agrees upon, which is not going to happen because the conservatives won't let that happen. And meanwhile, you've got conservatives that want the government to fall now so they can go into an election now before we address these terrible foreign election things that they claim are so terrible to democracy that David Johnson's a corrupt man. And then we have the NDP they're saying, this is so terrible, David Johnson should resign on principle and follow the will of the House, but the NDP doesn't want to go into an election now because, well, maybe we can't trust our elections? So the conservatives are saying, we can't trust our elections, but let's have one now. <laughs> it's just an endless cycle of bullshit. Right. Again, they are, they are treating us like we are stupid. Then... Because they think we are. Yes. And then he, she says, well, then Trudeau, he has to say, if he's asked that question, because Trudeau's his boss. We call this preemptive framing. It's a rhetorical device. Of course. Preemptive framing. He's like, no, he doesn't have to say that. Again, he's an 81-year-old man who's led tons of commissions and stuff like this. I am sure he is clever. <laughs> enough to think of an answer other than because Trudeau's my boss. No, that's the answer you want him to say, and that's the answer you're pre-stuffing in his mouth. So when he doesn't say it, then you goes, oh my God, I can't believe he was so disingenuous or that he lied, or and you can attack his character again. Just for the past four, four weeks, you've been saying, well, he must call a public record. He must, he must, he must. So when he didn't, you can attack him <laughs> It's just a never-ending cycle and then of bullshit. He says that uh, Johnston was brought in after Harper declared that there was a need for a public inquiry. Yes, but he was brought in to determine the terms of reference, which he was ordered to determine in a specific and very, very narrow way to make sure that nothing got caught. Mm -hmm. It's no different okay, I'm going to call the public inquiry, but I'm going to leave the terms of reference up into the air. The most important thing about the call of the public inquiry is the terms of reference. <laughs> In fact, it probably would have been to have David Johnson declare that we need a public inquiry. Or, or even if David Johnson declared that we needed a public inquiry, somebody could still have made a case that he's not the person to determine the terms of reference of it because that's the part that's the most important so she's trying to make the part that's the <laughs> he was only called into no no don't be fooled that's mm -hmm. the most important part <laughs> okay uh so no harper's not noble, noble here and then she goes well well in that case right i mean david johnson had no prior relationship with stephen harper when he named them to the oliphant inquiry 
yeah, but he did have a prior relationship with Stephen Harper by the time Stephen Harper named him Governor General to save his government when he was thinks he thought he was going to face a confidence vote. How interesting is that, huh? Yes. So the first step, but the second time he nominated him, he thought he was his guy, didn't he? Yeah. Because he did his job keeping the terms of reference real narrow, full Maroney. Thus saving the government of the day lots of embarrassment by having to take a position against a former prime minister, one who won the biggest majority in conservative history. Uh-huh. Lisa. Lisa. She's just a you terrible are person. An intelligent woman. Why are you choosing on purpose to wear this look? I don't know. Why are Honestly, you don't purposely know. debasing yourself in this way? You are a smart, intelligent, capable. Why are you? Del- when we're she talking about be, people agreeing to doing stuff like this, you're talking about. She might be smart and intelligent, but she's yourself. not a good person. She's not a good person at all. She's a horrible human being who has done terrible things to the province of Ontario. She is not a good person. She's not. And you would think after what happened to her husband, she might be a little bit humble. And no, no, she is so focused on her bullshit, basically, that she can't see. She's got rose colored glasses on and will only see things the way she wants to see them and refuses to see any other side of any story. She's just not a good person. (sighs) Yeah, she lost the Adam Vancouver. Yes, yes, she did. Yep. Oh, man. That was, wow. That was like two scoops of BS. Yeah, yeah. I thought I, thought I just ate a bowl of Kellogg's bullshit brand. Well, and speaking <laughs> of more bullshit. Oh, crap, Lisa. There's this one, this this clip. I'm going to share this clip quickly, and then I'm going to jump in to, sh- to, to do okay. the, day, the day's shave. The daily shave. This is from uh, Yarrow, Yarrow Giesberg. Yeah. And this, you know what clip this is, right? Oh, yeah. You reference that story, though. You reference that. Yes. That you said yes. you couldn't remember why. So That's who, right. What, what did you mean by that? Got the, exactly what I said. Yeah. What did you mean about, about him, the reason why he left the school? Uh, you have to ask him why he left the school. Well, you you what did you mean? What I said. You didn't say anything. You insinuated. You suggested, you inferred. You know, it's it's almost like remember when uh, I think was it was it Ka- Kamala Harris that was questioning Bill Barr about. Mm-hmm. So did uh, Mr. Trump ever say that you should do this? Well, I don't know if he would exactly say infer, suggest, imply. None of these words. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> We all know what he was doing there and the way a, a, a number of his MPs and one who was a formerly a friend of mine stood up and cheered right away. But, but Scott Aitchison and Michael Chong did not, did not cheer, did not applaud, did not stand up. They sat in their seats and kind of went, brah. Leslie Luz didn't get up, but she was smiling. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I think the ones like, who didn't stand and cheer know better because they're like that, 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 that's a terrible idea because guess what? We all know, we all know this is utter bullshit. We all know this has been proven to be false. So I think parliamentary privilege should be suspended in this instance because you are, you are defaming him. Yeah. That's a defamatory story. But, but here again, outside of the chambers. What did you mean? I meant what I said. You didn't say anything. Well, what are you suggesting? You'll have to ask him. Why? You're the one suggesting it. You brought it up. Yeah. It's not the prime minister sitting there on the other side of the bench. Well, let me talk to you about why I left. (laughs) You brought it up, dude. So now you're being asked what you meant, why you brought it up. What are you trying to say? Well, you have to ask him. I, I said what I meant, and you have to ask him. Yeah. yeah. What a fucking dick. <laughs> no, 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 sorry. Let me let me rephrase that. What a fucking bag of micropenes. Yes. <laughs> this is a bag of dicks. Ah. Uh, really is. 
what an asshole. Christ. <laughs> it, well, it's, it's, you know what? If it wasn't, if the consequences couldn't be so devastating because this guy is also engaging in stochastic terrorism. It's mm-hmm. like, this would be funny because he's so bad at this. He is. He's so bad at this, but he's really good at the stochastic terrorism because this is not for, this is not for mass consumption. What he's doing here. No, no, no. Uh, and, and he's just, he, it's stochastic terrorism, as I've said time and time again. I'll say it a thousand times over because that's exactly what he's doing. And he doesn't give a shit who he hurts if he can again, win the nanosecond. Right? I mean, if the prime minister is literally setting fires to kill people and is literally pumping the streets with drugs to kill people and really did leave that college because he was doing improper things with an underage. What is the solution for a person like that? How do you yeah. stop a person <laughs> like that? Um, arrest Think them. about it. In prison. And- what would you do to stop a person who is deliberately setting fires to kill its own people, pumping the streets with drugs to kill its own people, and sexually being a predator with minors. What is the solution for that? What are they suggesting be done without saying it? This is stochastic terrorism. Mm -hmm. It's exactly what it is. And they continue to do it on a daily basis and they don't give a shit. And here's the thing. What'll happen is we'll have another like rock throwing incident or something worse in this case. And they'll come out. Nobody deserves You've been cheering this shit on from day one, you lying piece of shit. You lying piece of human garbage. You've been cheering this on since day one. Yeah, and here's the thing, right? The ultimate irony is that this man is trying, specifically he's been hammering on the drug file, and he is literally a pusher of political fentanyl. Yeah. Yeah. He's, He's... the main pusher of toxic political drugs in our nation's system. Well, I'll address the uh, comment quickly here. We, um, we got shadow banned on YouTube for a week, uh, for allegedly spreading COVID misinformation, which is absolutely not who we are. We don't do that. We followed CDC, Health Canada, and public health guidelines from day one. Somebody accused us otherwise, so they shadow banned us. So that's why we're not on YouTube for this week. Oh, thanks, Sadika, for, for, uh, yeah. And here's a good statement right here. Yeah. Yep. They want a friendly sausage maker to step forward. Yep. 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 Kitlin has got it right. Um, I'm just, someone is going to get hurt. Yeah, and they don't care. But it, the minute it happens, they'll come out and say, oh, nobody deserves this type of, because uh, that's who they are. They don't give a shit who gets hurt. As long as they can win the nanosecond, that's all they care about. That's it. They've proved it time and time and time again, and they'll continue to prove it because these people are not conservative. They are not progressive. They are not for the people. They are for themselves and will do and say anything to gain power. I, I, I will say this till I'm blue in the face because guess what? I'm not wrong. As evidenced by the behavior of the leader of their party. Spreading defamatory misinformation, which has been debunked like five years ago. So, you know. And the latest one, of course, and I haven't really wanted to talk about it because I don't like, this is not what this show is about, but Bernardo. Yeah. It was a decision by Correctional Service Canada to transfer him to medium security prison, which, of course, made everybody lose their minds. Mm -hmm. Probably rightfully so. Um, And, uh, of course. Yeah? Pardon? He's not getting out. No, no. He'll never be released. No, no. But still, I can understand that. So then, of course, again, right, because all the bail thing and all that stuff that PPs would go out, well, you know, these people should stay in jail for life and absolutely and should be maximum security for life. And 
I'm not going to say no to that when it comes to Bernardo. But again, the prime minister like literally put the key of the cell door and it's correctional service, Canada. It's completely arm's length. And they have now since announced, you know, that they will review it. Mendocino says his office can't intervene in an independent decision. So basically, once again, the conservatives who made a big stink about SNC are asking for the government to directly intervene into the legal system. Mm -hmm. Because they can fundraise off it. Um, And here's the thing as well, right? When we're talking about the families, right? They always wrap themselves up in the families. I can't believe you're letting them go. And the families are having legitimate trauma when they hear about this. But they're wrapping themselves in their trauma while asking for the federal government to directly intervene in the legal system, which they're not allowed to do, which if they did do, then they would attack them for that. They're the ones that are exploiting those families misery oh yeah because they keep on bringing up the subject it's right it's like that blackface thing it's like, if you have mentioned blackface more often than someone has done blackface and you keep on showing the pictures what you're the one that's victimizing people because oh, yeah. every time those pictures appear somebody who is partly black or black hello sees them and feels the thing that you say justin trudeau was terrible for making people feel by wearing the blackface well, this you're is a no good better, point. you're worse. You might as well slap on the paint. This this is a, a good point from Linda. What's alarming is that he may be signaling how he would interfere in the justice system if he were ever to get into power because, you know, blaming Justin Trudeau for what Corrections Canada does is absolutely ridiculous. He has no say in, in how they operate. No prime minister does. That's not... It's like, you know, he controls everything, but he controls nothing. He's responsible for everything, but responsible for nothing. It's like they can't make up their goddamn minds. Yeah. And it's not like old Dan Yeller hasn't floated the trolley balloon. Yeah. Well, I didn't know we didn't have Clement, the power of clemency. And it's not like he didn't uh, endorse her. I mean, on like the very last possible day when there was like mm. no risk to him when he was absolutely sure he was. But but he did he did hitch his wagon to her. Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course he did. And I think he might regret that because uh, she's going to go all the way wackadoodle. And uh, well, well, you endorsed her. Well, you endorsed her. That might not work out for him very well. Um, But yeah, uh, the Minister of Public Safety, Marco Mendocino, again, (sighs) says he was shocked uh, by the announcement of the prison transfer. I would suggest that that would be the case. I don't see why Correctional Service Canada would feel the need to inform, briefly pre-inform someone of their decision because they are an independent body. Uh, but yes, it seems that Correctional Service Canada has uh, its ear to the ground and has had got a sense of the backlash and is saying, oh, well, we might review this to see to make sure if we got everything right. I got another one for you. I don't know if you saw this. So, uh, rats sinking ship. Take a look at this tweet. Okay. Christine Anderson. Yep. The Nazi who came to Canada. Yep. Seriously, yet another sellout in response to Danielle Smith's June marks Pride Month. Everyone deserves to feel safe, welcomed, and respected in our province. And although Albertans are exceptionally inclusive and kind, there's still more work to do. That's why we will continue. Look, I think it's lip service from Danielle Smith, to be honest with you. Yes, but she I don't said the message. Her when I can throw her when I can't no. lift her up. No, I don't trust her at all. Uh, but she 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 put the message out there. And, and of course, what is Christine Anderson, the Nazi Nazi? See you next Tuesday. Say immediately. Oh, yeah, another sellout again. Is she the agent that's supposed to keep people in line? You got Again, what is her obsession with Canada? Who assigned Canada to her? Yeah, that's her file, right? Clearly. Clearly. And if uh, Oliver and Smith are not following the script, then she pipes in. Mm-hmm. Mother pipes in. Mother. I'm going to save that one for posterity's sake. Man. 
Uh, so on this thing uh, about Mendocino, right here it says uh, pu- federal public safety. This is from a CBC article. Federal public safety minister Marco Mendocino says he was, quote, shocked by the Correctional Service of Canada's decision to transfer serial killer Paul Bernardo to a medium security prison, but he insists his office cannot overrule it. Mendocino told reporters on Monday that he spoke to CSC Commissioner Ann Kelly. That morning, she promised to review the decision and report back to him in short order. Quote, I told her that as a former federal prosecutor and as a Canadian, that I was profoundly concerned and again shocked by this decision. She assured me that she understood. She also assured me that she was going to be reviewing the matter. He says his hands are tied because Correctional Service of Canada decisions on transfers are independent of his office. Quote, this office cannot exercise any review powers over that decision. In the statement, the Correctional Service of Canada confirmed that the commissioner has, quote, ordered an additional review of this offender's security classification to ensure it was appropriate, evidence-based, and more importantly, adequately considered victims. And that might be where the exit or the off-ramp is. Well, we announced this, and then we heard from the families of the victims and that they're reacting. Maybe next time consult with the families of the victims first. Before I got to shave and then go. <laughs> okay. So I'll jump in real quick. I'll switch cameras in a second. You keep rolling and uh, I'll be right back. All right. Uh, so I see we have some kits here. Um, and uh, Kit uh, Gokichu 9000, who's a new name for us? Do you guys talk music? Uh, we principally talk uh, politics, Canadian politics, sometimes a little American. Uh, but we do talk about uh, Canadian politics and culture over to all culture so yeah sometimes we do talk about music uh but it's not primarily a music show although mr grizzly is um a dj and a very big a very big jazz aficionado and uh if you love jazz he has a podcast on spotify called songs and stories um which is basically a jazz appreciation course that i really really recommend it's basically a free jazz appreciation course and then he has a couple of other music shows as well um but yes uh, we, while we don't principally talk about music here we do and uh once a month we have a pub uh, cast uh, that we film live and uh, that is the opposite of the show. It's absolutely no politics, just fun uh, pub chat. And on that one, we do talk music uh, frequently enough. So uh, there you go, Gokuchu. I hope that answers your question. And uh, if you need me, if you need more, please uh, post more in the chat and uh, I will elaborate more if you need. Um, all right. So while Mr. Grizzly is taking care of the daily shave, uh, we have some interesting news from the state of Tennessee. Now, Tennessee, if you remember, uh, well, has become a little famous lately uh, for several reasons. First, uh, there were the three people that they ejected from their legislature uh, because they stood with children who were upset because there are mass shootings. And sometimes in schools. Uh, So, yes, they tried to um, kick three people out. Well, they did kick three people out. uh, And, oh, sorry, they voted on kicking three people out. And then they kicked two of the three out. And the two they happened to kick out were young black men. And the one that decided, the one that was not kicked out was a white woman. Uh, Of course, they got reinstated. And, um, you know, there's whatever aftermath from that is going to happen. But at the same time, um, Tennessee passed a law that, um, well, they called it the Adult Entertainment Act. Uh, But the main reason uh, for this was to try and basically ban drag in public places. That was essentially their goal. Uh, but then they threw in like burlesque and a whole bunch of other stuff in it to try to make it like an adult entertainment act. Well, over, according to Rolling Stone, over two months after Tennessee's restrictive anti-drag law was scheduled to go into effect, a federal judge has blocked the bill, deeming it unconstitutional. In a ruling issued after midnight, Friday District Judge Thomas Parker wrote that, quote, the court finds that Despite Tennessee's compelling interest in protecting the psychological and physical well-being of the children, the Adult Entertainment Act is an unconstitutional restriction of the freedom of speech, which is going to make it very difficult for any other state that has tried to pass that type of thing to 
get away with it. In late March, after Governor Bill Lee signed the AEA into law, Memphis-based LGBTQ theater group Friends of George's filed a lawsuit against the state calling the AEA unconstitutional. Quote, under this reading of the law, a drag queen wearing a miniskirt and a cropped top and dancing in front of children violates this statue, but a Tennessee Titans cheerleader wearing precisely the same outfit doing precisely the same routine does not because she is not a, quote, female impersonator, the lawsuit noted. <sighs> Thank goodness for cheerleaders. <laughs> Following- there we go. Today's oh. new look. Ooh la 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 la. It's the uh, it's it's all in in honor of this uh, end of the year. Ten months after growing my beard out, it's time for a shave, and we're trying to raise money for Cornerstone Housing for Women. I'll put the link in the chat. It's great if you can help out. We really do appreciate it. All right, all right. Um, so, um, following the federal court ruling, Judge Parker temporarily halted the AEA just hours before it was due to go into effect on April 1st, and now they've had this hearing, and it's been deemed unconstitutional. Basically, uh, the law is overly broad in its application, and in order to apply it in a manner that would actually make any difference, it would have to be so narrow that it would basically would be useless to the people who are trying to hate on drag queens. So um, the law just can't work. Uh, Parker's ruling on Friday effectively for now prevents lawmakers from enforcing the controversial bill that restricted public drag performances and, quote, adult cabaret in Tennessee. As the commercial appeal notes, the ruling came just hours before a pair of Pride Month festivals in Memphis and Middle Tennessee were set to begin on Saturday. So the show is going on, darlings. (laughs) So, yeah. And um, before um, anybody... um, think so well you know this was a liberal um this was a trump appointed judge <laughs> it was Sorry. a trump appointed judge so uh, I, got, I, got I gotta get to the office it's uh, it's eight o'clock i'm, I'm late Sorry, right. um, we got re- really sidetracked and distracted today, and uh, my apologies to all involved. Uh, but uh, we do have to wrap it up really quickly here because I got to get to uh, work and earn a living so we can continue to uh, have enough money to keep this show going because it does cost money to produce this show. Uh, I had to increase my bandwidth costs and buy a lot of equipment. The microphones that we speak into, these are 350 bucks a piece. So just give you an idea you know, of, of costs involved. It does cost us money to put this on. We love to do it we're going to continue to do it for until we no longer draw breath basically so you know if you can help us out that little uh qr code right there thanks all right kids it's the end of the episode of the daily beaver podcast subscribe to all the places you know that democracy is something that you do so please write those letters we'd love to hear from you true north eager beaver at gmail.com at true eager on twitter true north eager beaver facebook page podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words is where you go to subscribe subscribe to our youtube media channel even though we're shadow banned we still need your help and you uh, can subscribe beaver lodge this is uh, your eager beaver saying until next time, dear kids, it could be a tough world out there. So please be kind to and gentle with yourself and please make a donation to Cornerstone Housing for Women uh, to help with our thing and send us a receipt uh, that you have done that so that we can count how much has been raised. Mr. Grizzly, words of wisdom? Uh, wear a mask today because the weather is bad outside if you're in Canada's capital. All right, there you go. Mr. Grizzly, please roll the credits and have a good day at work. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver media podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum, and the Peppermaster, Hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind.
All right, kids, go out there and make the day special. See ya.